Now, CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta on assignment for 60 Minutes. There's a new front in the war on drugs, and it's not the kind of drugs you might think. We're not talking about cocaine, heroin, or methamphetamines. This is about drugs that could wind up in your medicine cabinet, counterfeit prescription drugs made with cheaper, sometimes even dangerous ingredients, such as highway paint, floor wax, boric acid. Criminal counterfeiters will go to any length to evade detection. We found a shadowy network of criminals with made-up names, constantly changing locations, and lots and lots of money. An estimated $75 billion a year. The story will continue in a moment. You're watching a surprise early morning raid in Lima, Peru. 200 police in riot gear storming an indoor market. Their target? Counterfeit prescription drugs. And they found them everywhere. There were crude packaging machines and silk screens with imprints of actual name brand drugs. Hundreds of thousands of counterfeit medicines collected from that raid were traced back to this house. Through a back door and down a narrow hallway, we found a tiny squalid patio that was actually a fake drug factory, turning out an astonishing number of counterfeit medications. Peruvian police were led here by someone you wouldn't expect, John Clark from the American drug company Pfizer. I'm looking at this, this pan with these pills in it. This stuff is going to get into people's medicine cabinets around the world. Unfortunately, yes. Clark heads up a global security team assembled by Pfizer, former FBI, Homeland Security, and narcotics agents who work with local police to track down criminals around the world. Counterfeit operations like these are costing drug companies millions of dollars a year. This has Pfizer written all over it. And it's even got the newer Pfizer emblem with the little slant on it and stuff. I mean, from the packaging, you'd never know. Here, they discovered about two dozen medicines, including antibiotics, seizure, blood pressure, and pain medications. We're in the middle of this very primitive courtyard. Uh, this doesn't look like any kind of facility uh, that you'd expect at all. Does this surprise you? No, no, unfortunately. The quantity of counterfeits you're seeing is, is phenomenal. Um, the conditions are just abysmal. And if the consumer ever realized that products that they're putting inside their bodies come from this from dirty water, drying out in the open under a heat lamp, insects and everything else uh, getting into it, contaminants being you know, brought into the, um, the equation and stuff, I think they'd be horrified. According to John Clark, counterfeit Pfizer drugs, many from disgusting conditions like this, have made their way to pharmacies and hospitals in at least 46 different countries, including England, Canada, and the United States. So right now there are people around the world taking medications to, to save their own lives who are simply taking the wrong thing and they don't even know it. Yes, absolutely. If you have any concerns, you should go to your doctor, should you go to your pharmacist. If the pill dissolves differently, if it tastes bitter or differently. John, you know, I I'm a doctor. I looked at these medicines today. I wouldn't be able to tell if they were fake or not. Right. I, and that, that, I'm the person they're gonna ask. Right. I don't know the answer. How are other people going to know the answer? Next step is every pharmaceutical company will take it back, do the test, then find out if it's a counterfeit, how it got there, and try and make sure that they get off the market immediately. The pills from Peru were sent here to Pfizer's testing facility in Groton, Connecticut. Sometimes counterfeits may have a percentage of the correct active ingredients, but not when it came to this antibiotic or this ulcer medicine. Sucrose, confectioner sugar, and maple sugar. Sugar and also chalk. Imagine taking a medication to treat a serious illness with those ingredients. People can die. People can be seriously injured, but people can also die. Kumar Kibble, Deputy Director at Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, is charged with protecting our borders from illicit trafficking. Over the past few years, his attention has increasingly focused on counterfeit drugs. In the scheme of things, how big a threat are fake drugs? Fake drugs are a big threat, and it is an exploding threat you actually have traditional criminal groups that may have engaged in traditional drug trafficking. And they realize, you know, I can make just as much money uh, making, you know, tens of dollars on a pill that I manufacture for pennies and have very little exposure in terms of, uh, in terms of prosecution. So you're talking about a very low risk, very high reward, potentially tons of money. Yeah, absolutely. When you think about that some of these pills can be manufactured, uh, you know, for 
40 cents and sold for 18 or 20 dollars i mean just think of that profit potential i mean it's just it's it's, it's insane this looks like a legitimate website but kibble tracks counterfeits from their source in clandestine labs to the united states where they're typically sold through rogue internet sites often posing as legitimate pharmacies 36 million americans are estimated to have bought their medicines from these sites many searching for quality drugs at a better price. Some sites pretend to be from Canada because Canada is known for safe, inexpensive medicines. Kibble caught this Israeli counterfeiter on a hidden camera, admitting that very scheme. And those are all internet parties? Is that really from Canada? No. <laughs> that same counterfeiter also told undercover investigators of another, decidedly low-tech way of smuggling hundreds of thousands of pills into the United States. He simply had them dropped in the mail. At the Postal Service facility at JFK Airport, the sheer volume of packages of counterfeit and suspicious drugs coming into the country is staggering. After x-rays... If you look closely here, you see little round objects that don't belong. Customs puts aside thousands for inspection. Looks like a normal run-of-the-mill speaker. That's every one of these bins. And this is just from one day. Our resources certainly haven't kept pace with the volume of products coming into the country, with the increase in volume. The Food and Drug Administration's David Elder told us when they do find a fake drug, they're often forced to ship it back to the sender. On this day, they found pills and vials from India, posing as legitimate thyroid, fertility, and hypertension medications. They had to send it all back. That sounds crazy. What? Why not go after this person? We don't have the authority to actually destroy this on site. This product could very well come back into the country through a different mail facility. Maybe it gets through, maybe it gets stopped. But they're but, banking on one of these times you're going to miss. Yeah. I think they are. And many of these fakes are so sophisticated, even investigators at this FDA lab in Cincinnati couldn't distinguish which bottle of Zyprexa is fake with the naked eye. Using a forensic light source, they can test the ink, and the label that lights up that's the real one. This fake Lipitor pill looks so authentic, they had to superimpose a diagram of an actual pill to see that the number 20 did not match up. With the naked eye, you could not see this. As I say, in India, you, you could manufacture anything. Uh, there's no limit. Balbir Bogal was recently arrested in Madison, Wisconsin for allegedly trafficking counterfeit drugs. He's also accused of providing millions of anti-anxiety pills from India to a website operator for a site with a common, seemingly harmless name. He was running an internet pharmacy, which is, actually I discovered recently that it's a, a website, uh, Easy Meds for You. Easy, Easy Meds, Meds for, you. for You. Yes. He had lots of lots of suppliers. You've never met him? Never met him. It's a total virtual world. Absolutely never met him, and I didn't even believe what his name was real or not. Bogal maintains his innocence and claims he was only supplying anti-anxiety medicines with the proper formulation and thought it was for the Asian market. The government says he knew the pills were illegally coming into the United States. Were you worried at all about these medications, where they were going to end up? Never looked at that issue at all. Do you wish you had it? Yes. What is even more alarming is these counterfeit medications are not just being sold on the Internet. They are also making their way into mainstream pharmacies and hospitals. FDA Commissioner Margaret Hamburg says that while the vast majority of our drug supply is safe, there's reason for concern. You know, we don't really know the full dimensions of the problem, but we do know that in certain countries, somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of, of really important drugs for health are in fact counterfeit. How does all this increase in counterfeit drugs around the world affect the United States? Just consider that 40 percent of drugs taken in this country come from other countries, 80% of the active pharmaceutical ingredients in drugs taken in this country actually come from other countries. Even if the prescription medications are manufactured in the United States, the raw ingredients often come from overseas through a complicated web of suppliers and distributors and are increasingly vulnerable to counterfeiting. That's what happened in 2008 with the blood thinner heparin, which millions of Americans rely on to prevent blood clots. Little did the manufacturer Baxter International know that one of the raw ingredients from China was counterfeit. How many people were affected by this? In this country, a little over 80 people actually died from contaminated heparin. Baxter says the number of deaths is closer to four or five. 
but everyone agrees it's difficult to know the exact number. Nurse Colleen Hubley says at her dialysis center in Toledo, Ohio, she saw one patient have cardiac arrest and others with strange symptoms after receiving heparin. Having hypotension, diarrhea, vomiting. I even had another patient that stated to me, you know, what is going on around here? Had you ever seen anything like this? Mm-mm, no. And then she says she saw the same symptoms in her own family. She says her husband Randy and her mother-in-law, both regular users of heparin due to chronic kidney disease, had bad reactions and died within a few days. Baxter, which is being sued by Colleen Hubley and others, disputes that and says the serious underlying medical conditions of her family and patient, quote, much more likely caused their deaths. They lost one of your patients, your mother-in-law, and your husband, Randy. Um, within a month or so. Gone. Colleen Hubley says she never imagined heparin could be counterfeit. You really counted on that heparin yes, being we perfectly did. fine. And I don't know if in my nursing career I'll ever take anything for granted again. Baxter's CEO told Congress that he deeply regretted what had happened. The company told us in a letter that the counterfeit ingredients so closely mimicked heparin that it was able to evade the quality control systems and regulatory oversight of more than a dozen companies and nearly a dozen countries. Three years later, FDA Commissioner Hamburg told us they're still struggling to get to the bottom of it. Do you know who, who perpetrated this crime with the heparin contamination or exactly how they did it? We do not know the answer to that question. Despite what happened with heparin, most of the ingredients in our medicines today still come from other countries, including China and India, which have notoriously weak regulatory systems. The FDA only inspects about 12 percent of overseas facilities a year. Everyone's concerned. It's hard to regulate. It's potentially problematic, even deadly. Why does it continue to happen? I think that we live in a globalized world, and, and components of all kinds of products are going to come from all over the world. It's cheaper over there. It's it, economics. It is economics for the companies. I do believe that we can do an enormous amount to strengthen the safety of the supply chain. Drug companies say they already have their own systems in place to protect their supply chains. But they also have to worry about those clandestine labs, like the one we saw in Peru, which are popping up all around the world, according to Pfizer's John Clark. Um, and if there are no consequences for those doing this, then there's no disincentive not to just go back and do it again once you're caught. I mean, the profit on, on illegal medicines is just phenomenal. And catching them isn't easy. At the lab in Peru, police arrested a messenger, but the kingpin of the counterfeit drug operation had slipped away. What do you think, John? Are they going to find this guy? They'll be lucky if they do. 